Hi there. Today, let's talk about what I consider to be the biggest content marketplace online and how you can use this to become a better, if not an exceptional, content marketer. And I am, of course, talking about Amazon. Amazon.com is, you know, it started out selling books in the 1990s. And I think it was the first place where you could buy books online. And eventually you could buy other things as well. So from books, you can buy movies, you can buy music. So a lot of content, right, is being sold on Amazon. And now there's live streaming and all sorts of other different products that you can buy on Amazon, but primarily content. And it is so huge. Now, let me just give you some numbers to give you an idea of how big Amazon is. Um, the annual revenue of Amazon, the, the last data that I found anyways, is close to $180 billion annual revenue. That's $180 billion with a B as in boy. Um, the number of users, 300 million users. 300 million people shop on Amazon, including me. And more than 500,000 employees. So that is how big Amazon is. And in terms of web traffic, I believe it is like definitely top 10 in the world in terms of the highest number of traffic that it gets. So because Amazon is so big, it, it sells so many products, so many people use it. You know what else is big about Amazon is it gets a lot of data, big data. It collects a lot of data about what people buy, what people look at, what people are interested in. And if you shop on Amazon, as I can imagine that you do, then I'm sure you've noticed that when you're looking at a product, um, Amazon gives you these not so subtle suggestions or recommendations, right? It says that the people who are interested in this product also looked at the following products. Or when you order something, it'll say the people who bought this product also bought so and so. Or people usually buy this product along with these other products. So Amazon knows all about our behaviors, our interests while we're using Amazon. And it is because of that that we can use Amazon as content marketers. So in case you're new, I, you're new here, my name is Lexi Rodrigo. I am a digital content marketer, content creator, content marketing consultant, and blog editor. I'm also a lifelong learner and a lifelong sharer of what I learned. And that is why I go every week live to deliver these presentations. So if you're watching, say hello in the comments because that is the only way that I know you're here. Whether you're watching this live or you're watching a recording, say hi. I always check back to see uh, any new comments and to respond to them. So I am seeing somebody here. Hi, Trish. Yes, you made it today after how many weeks of missing the live training. Hello, hello, Trish. I hope you're well and I'm so happy that you're here with me today. All right, so before I move on to share with you my five ways to use Amazon for your content marketing. Let's just go over some housekeeping. Uh, first of all, turn on your audio so that you can hear me. That is really the best way to experience these trainings. Get a pen and paper because you're gonna wanna take notes. And if you just, even if you just take one note, take note of one thing that you will do as a result of watching me, that will totally make my day. And share this video if you find it helpful or if you know somebody else who might find it useful, do share the video with them. There's a share button 
at the bottom of this video that will let you very easily share it. And if you have any questions at any point during my presentation, please type them in the comments. I will go and respond to the questions at the end of my presentation. Even if you're watching the recording, remember to type your questions in the comments because as I said, I always go back, check on the comments of my recorded videos to make sure that I'm responding to all of them. All right, so if you're ready, let's get started. Now you're looking at my Amazon, um, my Amazon account, all right? And let me just, uh, as you can see here, I have been shopping on Amazon since 1997. At the time, I was still living in the Philippines. It was really difficult to order stuff from abroad. It took months before I received them, and it's happened at least once where something I ordered got lost. <laughs> so even when, you know, despite all the obstacles, I started shopping in Amazon since 1997. So I'm just curious, those of you who are watching, how long have you been with Amazon? When did you sign up for Amazon? Um, type your answer in the comments. So five ways to use Amazon to become an exceptional content marketer. The first way is to discover content topics. Okay, so there's several ways that you can do this. And it all starts with Let's think of uh, let's think of a topic that. Do you have any suggestions for a topic that you want me to explore? Well, when I'm demonstrating, um, Trish. Let's see. So, the first thing to do is to one way, anyways, to get content ideas is to look at the bestsellers. Okay, so how do we do this? Whoops! Why am I clicking on? <laughs> All right, I need to, unfortunately, I need to um, minimize some things here so that I can see my screen. Okay, we need to go to, oh wow, I, I, I swear I practiced yesterday, but it's different when you're sharing your screen. Um, I wanna go to books. How did I? Oh my gosh. Department, books, and books. All right. So go to books. And the first thing that we're going to look at is bestsellers. So you can either go to the New York Times bestsellers or bestsellers and more. Let's go to the New York Times bestsellers. So um let's see so you will see fiction and non-fiction and to get content ideas you want to look at non-fiction all right so so you can get content ideas just by looking at the titles that's the first level Okay, for example, how to change your mind, what the new science of psychedelics teaches us about consciousness, dying, addiction, depression, and transcendence. Like that might spark something, right? Like for example, if we were to continue with my topic of content marketing, maybe how to create better content and then what the new science of blah, blah, blah whatever, right? Attention, um, attraction. I'm assuming there's a science behind those things. Okay, um, so that's just an example. Here's another one. A higher loyalty, truth, lies, and leadership. Like, I like this, you know, the, the three words. That can be content too, like um, higher traffic. Um, quality, whatever, right? <laughs> uh, what else? Three days in Moscow. Let's say three months of doing Facebook Live. Let's say I did Facebook Live every day for three months and then I can create content about that. 
Uh, one woman's obsessive search for the golden state killer. Ooh, I think I want to re read that. But so, anyways, you know, you just go over the bestsellers, the titles of the bestsellers, and that will help you come up with ideas for, you know, topics that you can create content about. And this, you don't have to look for bestsellers in your particular industry or market. It can be in any industry. And in fact, that's even more interesting because that will spark unusual ideas for you, right? Let's look at paperback nonfiction bestsellers, A Brief History of Humankind. So maybe I could write about A Brief History of content marketing because content marketing did actually begin with the internet no businesses have been doing content marketing for a long time but not a lot of people know this so just by looking at um, some of the best sellers I have an excellent topic idea for a topic let's see also when you're when I'm streaming uh, websites tend to be slower and right now like I'm not seeing <laughs> uh, I'm not seeing the the covers of these books um, so again with the three things murder magic and I don't know what the, the third thing is because I cannot see murder magic and madness at the fair that changed America the power of habit why we do what we do in life and business so maybe the power of i don't know well, about content marketing the power of headlines why we click on what we click <laughs> online something like that right okay so the other thing that you can do to find topics, and for this you will have, you know, it helps to browse um, books in your particular industry. So let's look for content marketing books. Okay. Here's one, content that converts, how to build a profitable and predictable B2B content marketing strategy. So now what you want to look at is the table of contents. Because on Amazon, there's a look inside feature, in case you haven't noticed, I'm sure you have, um, that lets you look inside the book. And you, you can see the table of contents of the book. I hope we can see that here. Oh, no. Oh, here you go. So what you can do is go over some of the either the new books or the best selling books or just any book in your industry. Right. And look at the contents. So developing your content marketing strategy. What is the intersection between what your customers want and or need? Um, what you want to be known as? So just by looking at these things you can come up with some ideas for what to write about in your blog posts or what to talk about on your videos or your podcast, really any type of content. For example, I'm looking at six parts of an ecosystem. So I could probably write about what is a content marketing ecosystem in the first place, right? And what are the different parts of your ecosystem? For example, um, this particular author, Laura Hanley, is talking about six parts of a content marketing ecosystem. I may or may not agree with this, right? So maybe I have my own version. All right, so there's four parts. Okay, choose the right audience, avatar. I might probably want to write about why you don't need a customer avatar or what to do if you don't want to create a customer avatar or um, different ways that you can have the same effect of writing for just the one audience without actually putting together a customer avatar. So I already got 
three content ideas and I am <laughs> only in chapter three of this book. So another way to get content ideas is actually to look at the reviews of books. And here you can even look at reviews of very old books, but you want to have like a nice readership right to the book. It's got to be selling in order for it to have reviews. Um, so I particularly like to look at the low reviews. So one star, two star reviews and see what is it that people dislike what are, about this book? What are they complaining about? Because maybe they're saying, well, this book didn't talk about X, Y, Z, whatever. So let's see, why did this reviewer give just two stars? It's all about having a huge number of contacts and friends and associates and using them to get your sales. So it's assuming that marketing is what your company does. It's about marketing, it's not about content. These are organizations that do more than just try to get sales by using people. Okay, for yuppies, not serious people, and not certainly not for creators or inventors. Huh, interesting. Okay, so let's see if we can find another. The book is not well edited or formatted. The content is used for how useful however it's not easy to navigate all right okay um let's look at something else let's see how about this one authority content and again i want to look at the critical reviews let's see why this person gave just the one star the book is, in a nutshell, hold a workshop event, hire a videographer, hire a video editor, hire a web designer, and publish your video to social media. <laughs> okay, I don't know about you, but that's not really very helpful to me. Doesn't go deep into the technique and SEO concepts. It revolves around one idea, one format. I was expecting multiple formats, syndication details across multiple channels. So then I might want to talk about uh, specific techniques then and, and go more granular with my content into techniques and cover multiple formats. I may or may not, right? It's all up to you really what you take from these reviews and if you really want to be organized about this you can create a spreadsheet and copy and paste some of the things that you're finding here because you know you're not going to remember and also sometimes you're going to want to you're going to find problem language that you'll want to use in your content and when you're marketing your content okay great book Okay, uh, there's, there isn't really a suggestion. Okay, here's one. Uh, overall, this book was okay, but seemed to assume the reader had a head start already on content creation and their business roadmap. Um, a lot of promotion of SEO services, handful, but wouldn't reader recommend. So again, this person is, seems to be looking for something more basic in terms of content creation. Uh, and here's someone who's not a newcomer. They said they had in, in experience for over 15 years. I was waiting for that aha moment when I could actually discover an enlightening idea. Not quite that here, but still worth a read. Okay. So you get the idea, right? If you want to get topic ideas, look at the titles of bestsellers, uh, look at the table of contents and read the reviews. Okay, that's just the first way that you can become a better content marketing through Amazon. The second way is you can use Amazon to learn how to write better headlines and titles for your own books, your eBooks, your online courses, um, what else? The titles of your videos. And the way to do that is again by looking at the titles of bestsellers. So here now you can um, look at New York Times bestsellers uh, and 
even just Amazon bestsellers. And this time, let's take a look at Amazon bestsellers. And you're, you're going to want to look at New York Times bestsellers as well because those are not independently published. Those are published uh, by publishing houses. And these companies, they hire editors who, you know, they, it, they make a living out of coming up with really good book titles, right? Because the title of the book plays a very um, strong role in how well the book sells. It's unfair, right? <laughs> but it is just so true that people judge books by their covers. That includes me. And I think that includes you as well. Um, so look at the lists of bestsellers. So here you have um, several choices. You can look at New York Times bestsellers. You can look at Amazon charts of the most read books. Amazon charts of, charts of the most sold books. So let's look at the most sold. And disclaimer, I have not actually explored this Amazon charts. So apparently these are weekly charts that let you know the top 20 most sold and most read books of the week. So Amazon's most sold, they rank books according to the number of copies sold and pre-ordered on Amazon.com, Audible.com, Amazon Bookstore, so meaning Amazon bookstores in other countries like Amazon.ca, Amazon.uk, or .jp, so all the Amazon bookstores, and books read through digital subscription programs. So you're looking at a huge amount of data here. Okay, so let's see. Most read, again, you can choose fiction or nonfiction. Let's take a look at nonfiction. Excuse me while I take a sip of my tea. I also want to see if uh, we have any comments so far. Um, okay, just a comment from Trish. Lexi, this is great information. I never thought of looking at the table of content contents, but that's brilliant for not having to recreate the wheel when you're writing tutorials for workshops or for writing a series of blogs ahead of time and then schedule them. It helps to break things into a clear format. So true. Okay. Thank you, Trish. And that is, yes, that is so true. Um, not a lot of people maybe have thought of uh, looking at the table of contents. I always do. And so I hope that you'll start doing that now. Right. So going back to headlines. <clears throat> um, here's... <laughs> facts and fears so the alliteration that's a really good way to come up with a headline um, let's see I'm not gonna try to come up with headlines right now because it's gonna make this um, this training longer I'm thinking of something around words and something else for content marketing some another word that starts with W anyway um, here, 12 rules for life, right? An antidote to chaos. How about 12 rules for content creation? An antidote to overwhelm or an antidote to obscurity. The subtle, oh, here's a title I, can, I cannot actually read out loud. The subtle art of not giving up, you know what? A counterintuitive approach to living a good life. So maybe the subtle art of what? The subtle art of not of not being hypey. <laughs> A counterintuitive approach to selling online. Something like that. Again, how to change your mind. Girl, wash your face. The rest of the sway. Hmm, I don't know. That's not very compelling to me. Bad blood. There you go again with the alliteration. I'll be gone in the dark. Factfulness. 
Oh, I like that title. So you get the idea, okay? When you're hard pressed to come up with a good headline or a good title for your own book, your courses, as I said, videos, just try, you know, scrolling down these things because these are the things that people are reading. They're buying, anyways, right? They're buying these books. What about most read? What can we see in most read? Is it and is it different? So most read books. Let's look at description. Look at the description. So um, Amazon ranks books based on the average number of daily Kindle readers and Audible listeners. So now we're looking at not just you know the the clickbait the clickbaitiness or the clickworthiness of a title, but this is actual readership. So let's see if there's an overlap or is it the same as the most sold? It's very similar, right? There is definitely an overlap and you even have some old, older books are still here. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. So I hope that this is opening your mind, right? To how you can all this wealth of information that is on this website called Amazon.com. All right, so that is number two, right? Better headlines and titles on Amazon. The third way that you can use Amazon.com to become a better content marketer is by finding influencers. Now here, what I like to to do, of course, you can find influencers by looking at, you know, the authors of these best-selling books, but sometimes they're not actually easy to connect with, right? For example, I don't know, Stephen, like Stephen King, <laughs> if you wanted to interview him, for example, it's probably not going to be easy. So what I like to look at is um, to look at the new books and especially books that are just coming out. So here you go to books again and then click on new releases. So these books are either, you know, they've just come out or you'll also see books that are, are still coming out. Um, and here you want to look at the books within your industry. So let I'm going to look at uh, let's see business, business and money, and then let's look at the marketing books, marketing and sales, and then I want to look at new either new releases or still to be released. So why? Because when somebody has a book that's just coming out or has just been released, they want to spread the word about their books, right? They want a lot of people to know about their book and to order their book so that they'll get on the bestseller list. Because you to get on the bestseller list, you have to sell a lot of books within a short period of time. And so these authors are going to be more open to connecting with you, even if you don't have a, a huge audience yet, right? So I might be looking for people to interview on my weekly Marketing Insights Live. So then I can look at, ooh, Side Hustle Millionaire. Uh, that sounds interesting, right? Because a lot of my viewers have side hustles. And so I might want to connect with Tony Watley See, look at his author page on Amazon and I'll see about him and sometimes he'll have, see here, here's updates. Okay, so I get to see what he looks like. They might have links to their videos and then I can see if they're okay to, to interview on video, right? And there might be a, uh, see there's ways for him for us to connect with him. He's on Instagram. He has this website, right? So I can connect with him and I can say, hey, Tom, Tony, 
I do this weekly interview. I have a few hundred uh, subscribers who are very engaged and a lot of them uh, have side hustles and I think they would be interested to hear from you about how to become a millionaire, especially uh, to hear about your new book. So then I can connect with him and ask him to appear with me, right, on, on this uh, weekly live video. So that's the third way that you can use Amazon. Find interesting people that you can um, connect with. And by the way, while you're at it, <laughs> another uh, type of content is to review books in your industry, especially new books. And that's one way um, that you can become a, a thought leader in your industry. That's a little bonus for you. By the way, I have another bonus coming up. I'm actually sharing six ways that you can use Amazon.com for content marketing. So the number four way that you can use Amazon.com for content marketing is to become a topic expert. And that is, you know, find the books within your industry and just read them. Really, if you want to become an expert, you can't get around having to read the books in your industry. So, you know, keep abreast of what's, what are the new books coming out and also, um, you know, read them, be familiar with them, be familiar with the authors in your industry, definitely the books, and you, have, you just have to keep reading. And nowadays, you know, I, I know people who say they're just not readers, but hey, take a look at this. There's this thing called audiobooks. And a lot of the people that I know who are not readers, they're able to read or consume more books by getting them through audio. Right? So here we go. So these are just some of the books that I should be reading. <laughs> Although I tend to write, uh, read more business books nowadays. Content cookbook. It's still coming out in August. So now I can put this in my calendar already to interview this author right before his book or around the time that his book is launched. All right, so let's go to number five. You can use Amazon to promote your content. Now, this is not very easy because, first of all, you have to have a book up on Amazon. And, you know, that's not, it, not, it might not necessarily be hard. Like, you can just put together a short book, um, publish it through Kindle Digital Publishing, KDP, right? And uh, put it up on Amazon. And when you do, guess what? You get an author page. So I have one, just a single book on Amazon that I co-wrote with Danny Inney and Jim Hopkinson. And that is why I have an author page. And by the way, this is not automatic. Um, you have to create your author page. And take a look at this. Are you seeing this? Author updates. You can link your blog. And that's what I did. So every time I publish a new blog post, it gets syndicated here on my author page. Can you imagine that? And so people who are checking you out on Amazon, they can discover your blog or whatever platform that you're using um, that you can connect in your author page. I don't know, like I have a WordPress blog. I don't know what other platforms you can connect. But if you remember Tony, Tony Watley, he has something else connected. I believe this is his Instagram. Okay, so really depending on where you're most active, you can connect it with your author page. And, and that is one way that you can um, 
promote your content on Amazon.com. And you know what? This actually performs quite well in Google. Let me show you what happens when I search my name on Google. So there's my website, okay, my Facebook, my Miracy author page, images. Ooh, who's this? <laughs> Uh, my LinkedIn, my Twitter, my YouTube, some random stuff that have nothing to do with me, my business to community author page, and look at that, my Amazon author page. Okay, so I wonder if we search Tony Watley, if his author page will come up on the first page of Google as well. So we have LinkedIn, Facebook, that might not be him, some Instagram, uh, and there you go. Yep. So Amazon consistently, the author page will, apparently he has more than one author page, Amazon author page, and I wonder if this is the same person now. <laughs> Anyways, um, it always shows up on the first page of the Google search results. So that's, um, you know, worthwhile looking into, especially if you want to publish a book anyways, right? Um, okay, and here's the bonus, the bonus way that you can use Amazon.com to become a better content marketer. marketer is use it to monetize your content. Um, so let me see if I can, aha, yes. Sign up, you can sign up to be an Amazon associate, which means you'll be an affiliate of Amazon, and then you can promote products on Amazon, get your affiliate links for them and publish them on your website, and when people buy through your links, then you get a commission. Now, I have to warn you, the commission is extremely small. But, you know, it does add up. And so if you'll be mentioning products anyway, why not get something for it, right? And um, what I did here is you can also get your... Um, your sh yeah, I, I can't remember what it's called, but it's my Amazon shop page on Am that's within Amazon and you can add products here that you want to recommend like I have you know products that I use for videos for productivity I have this one random kitchen thing because I really love these um, super peel pizza peel right some books um, this laptop desk that I am actually using right now the web camera I'm using right now, the microphone I'm using, and more books and so on. Now the difference is you this link, the link to your Amazon shop, you are allowed to share this link on social media. Unlike uh, your, your affiliate, like the regular affiliate Amazon link uh, for specific, oops, sorry, for specific products, um, I wonder if I can show you what I'm talking about. For example, if I just want to promote this camera, I can go to the page and I can get a text link for this camera. Now this text link, I can add it to my web page, right? Any web page on my site. But according to the Amazon uh, terms of use, I cannot share this link in social media. I can't uh, put this on on uh, Facebook, for example. But, so this link, I can use it on my website, but not on social media, and I think not on not in emails either. But the, the oh, I've lost it. The link to my shop, this link to my shop, to this page, which is within Amazon, I can share this in social media. So I can put this on uh, the description of my YouTube videos, for example, or just on Facebook, right? 
I can be probably talking about what do I use when I'm going live online and I can share this link. Now, of course, the the disadvantage is that it's not to a specific product. Like it's got all the products that I've added to it, which could be like a whole bunch of things like uh, pizza peel and business books and Kindles. But, you know, it is what it is. If you are going to follow Amazon's uh, user agreement, affiliate agreement, then, um, yeah, you have to have this. So that's it. Um, the five ways for you to monetize, I mean, to use Amazon <laughs> to become a better content marketer. So let me just go over those again. So one, use it to discover content topics. Two, use Amazon to learn how to write better headlines and titles. Three, you can use Amazon to find influencers and to connect with them. Four, use Amazon to become an expert in your content, in your topic that you're talking, that you talk about. Five, use it to promote your content by creating an author page. And bonus six, use it to monetize your content. There you go. So, any questions? Let me just look at the comments to see if there are any questions. Musa Mendy says, I like your way. Thank you, Musa. Um, let's see. Anything else? Trish says her topic is painting on fabric. Okay, so Trish, that is a very specific topic, very narrow. I do know there are books about painting on fabric, but you can expand, right? You can uh, look at other fabric arts, a book about fabric arts, book about even sewing, right? Crafting, different things that you can do with fabric. Sewing, I don't know what else. But yeah, you don't have to be so narrow. You don't have to just look at books about painting on fabric specifically. But definitely, every time a new book about painting on fabric comes out, I expect you to read it, Trish, and to talk about it or review it on your blog and on your Facebook Lives. I know that Trish does Facebook Lives. Um, what else? What else do we have here? Uh, too long. Okay, Trish does have a question. What is the average number of words in a title? Are the best ones really short? It depends. The title of what? So if it's a title of a blog post, now you're going to want to look at your SEO title and your actual title, the title that people see, right? Because those can be two different things when you're when we're talking about your blog. Um, the SEO title is a title that the um, search engines crawl, the, that their robots see. And then there's a title that human beings see. Um, and so there's a limit, right? You don't want to be too long. Like, I don't have the actual number of words. Again, with email, there you don't want to be too long because nowadays a lot of people are checking emails on their phone and it's uh, it gets cut anyways I don't know if you can see that the titles are truncated Ooh, I, I let me show that to you again the titles are truncated to just about five or six titles uh, words five or six words so I'm not saying that your title should be just five or six words but your first five words have to be compelling the five, first five words of your email subject line have to be enough to hook um, your readers to read the rest of it, right? And then again, for books, I think if you scroll through the titles of the bestsellers, they tend to be on the short side. And there's even, I'm noticing a lot of books now that are just one word, you know, like decisive or whatever, we, we ran into a couple of them 
when I was scrolling earlier, I just can't remember. So it's like a one word and then you have a subtitle to explain what the book is actually about. So again, it depends on what you're titling, right? So for a book, it can be really short with a subtitle. Um, let's see. But definitely the first few words of your title are the most important. Okay. Another question from Trish. Oh, Audible listeners make me think of something. Should you write a blog and also do it in a shorter version as a video blog? Okay. Oh my gosh, this is such a good question because I am all about, um, and you might have missed this, Trish, but earlier I talked about the three R's, three R's of content creation, which is re reduce, reuse, recycle. So reduce the number of original content that you create. Reuse your content, meaning uh, if you create a video like this, which is go going to be on my Facebook page, reuse it on other platforms. So I will be uploading this on YouTube. I will be embedding this on my blog. And then recycle, the third R is recycle, meaning reformat your content. So this video is going to turn into text in the form of a blog post. I'm going to extract the audio from this video and put it up as an audio recording on my website. I could also put it up on, on SoundCloud. I do have a SoundCloud account. I don't actively use it, right? But so my answer is yes. If you write a blog post, you might want to, then I highly encourage you to also create an audio version of it. So just read it, right? And then create it, a video out of it. Absolutely. In fact, you know, you can take a look, Trish, at your most popular blog posts right now and turn them into your live stream videos. Easy peasy way to create content without having to reinvent the wheel. And because there's, these are based on your most popular blog posts, you already know that there is a lot of interest in that particular topic. All right. Uh, Kim is asking, are you still live? The video is frozen. If so, at least for me. Oh, yes, I am still live. Is everyone uh, still hearing and seeing me? Am I still live? I don't know. Let me quickly check on Facebook. Um, but maybe Kim... First of all, hi, Kim. Thanks for joining. Um, you might think the video is frozen because I was sharing my screen. Maybe that's what was happening. Uh, let's see. Am I still live? Um, I am. I can see it. Isn't that... Okay, the live one is a few seconds delayed from me. But yes, I am still live. Thanks for asking, Kim. All right. Another question from Trish. Please let me understand. You can link directly to a product you recommend them to purchase, but only on your website, not on social media. But if you want to share on social media, you can only share what this page is called what. Okay. Yes, Trish. So the last time I read... <laughs> the agreement for Amazon Associates, that's what they call their affiliates, is I am only allowed to use my affiliate product links on my website, so on a web page, right? But not on social media. What they do allow you to link to from social media is the link to your Amazon Okay, you know what? I am forgetting what it's called. It's your Amazon influencer page. That is what they call it. So you have to apply to become an, an Amazon influencer. And when you're approved, then they let you create this page, your Amazon influencer page. So let me show you mine again. This is my Amazon influencer page. And... Okay, so the link to this, this is amazon.com 
forward slash shop forward slash Lexi and that is a link you know you decide what the last portion will be what the slug will be uh, is it just Lexi or is it Lexi Rodrigo it's Lexi Rodrigo so amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash Lexi Rodrigo is my influencer page so I can share the link to my influencer page pretty much anywhere on social media in my emails so then that gives me more leeway to promote Amazon products all over the place right and not just on my website okay so yeah Trish you, you I mean this page that you're showing your Amazon page as a product and affiliate for is where so yeah this is my influencer page okay yes so yep just going over so people are just saying that they I am still live they can see and hear me that's very good so this is very helpful to know there's such a thing as an influencer page on Amazon who knew well I did yes because I am all about monetizing your web presence and I have been an associate of Amazon I think for 10 years since I started building websites um, yeah so yes and I only recently became an influencer when I was investigating how I can share my Amazon links and social media so that's how all right um, so any other questions again type them type your questions in the comments even if uh, you're watching the recording type your questions because I will check back and I will respond okay now if there are no more any questions if you don't have any more questions for me then I just want to say thank you thank you so much for your time and your attention I do appreciate you joining me I hope that you got something out of you this presentation let me know what you learned from uh, today's live training um, Trish is saying that it has helped her even if I only know about what is available it is helpful there's so much info it is overwhelming okay I didn't mean to overwhelm you Trish but if you can take even just one thing out of this I, that would make me very happy uh, and you're very welcome Trish thank you for being here with me um, and I will see you again next week and I believe I will go back to my regular Wednesday schedule 11 a.m. Eastern I hope you can join me again thanks and see you next time bye I forgot to say I have something for you go to alexisrodrigo.com forward slash content to get my free PDF okay and now <laughs> Trish is saying no you are not overwhelming what is being made available online is overwhelming thank you Trish thanks for uh, clarifying that and so this is really really thank you and goodbye <laughs>